Are you looking for ways to take your designs to the next level instantly and make them more functional and just more visually appealing? And that's gonna start with this tip right here that will help you with typography. We all know how important typography actually is and what you're about to see will help you use typography in more efficient ways. The first typographic step is that before you design anything, ask yourself who is the viewer and then choose two different contrasting fonts. It sounds easy, right? And yeah, it kind of is, but it's actually really powerful and you can do this in a matter of seconds. So here's a design with just one font, Elron Regular. The design looks okay, but we can decide to run with a bold and modern font such as Archivo Black and then contrast that with something a bit more serious like Alio. Now I chose Archivo because it's modern and dynamic, which does fit the audience for a sports product. And then also Alio establishes a professional and legible touch to the body text. We can also go with something like Elron Black and Elron Regular, as you can see right here. Apply font psychology and just choose two contrasting fonts. And this is a surprisingly easy way to make your designs look really well put together and just very professional. Now, if we disregard the obvious scale and perspective impossibilities in this image that do break the laws of physics, which one of these two designs looks more realistic? Hopefully you said this one here. Now let's look at how we can actually add some hyper-realistic light into Photoshop, but the quick method. There are many ways to give a lighting effect in Photoshop and this might not be the most ideal, but it's really effective and it's really fast. Firstly, of course, you need to make sure that image you choose or the image you take has a light side and then a darker side. So press Command or Control T and then also Control click to access this menu here and I'm gonna flip it horizontally. Now press Command or Control J to duplicate this layer just in case I ever wanna come back to a base copy or the original image. And then we're going to add a gradient map adjustment layer found right here. This is one of the most important steps in the process. Now we want to click the gradient slider here and then use the two similar colors from the background. So for the shadows, I'm gonna go for a very dark blue, almost black, and then white for the highlights. Right now, it obviously doesn't look ideal. So what we can do is to play around with the layer blend modes and adjust the opacity. Overlay is looking pretty neat actually, but we still need to complete the process. And for that, you need to change the foreground color to a CMYK value of 00050, which should be a kind of gray. Then create a new layer and this will be our dodge and burn layer. And make sure that it's actually in the front of all layers. Now hold down the alt or the option key and then press delete. And this should cover your layer with a kind of gray foreground color. But if you end up with a gray color just masking the focal point like you can see here, hold down the alt option key and then click between these two layers. Now if we change the layer blend mode to something like soft light, we do have a nice soft effect across the design. But importantly, we can now use the dodge and burn tools on the design to enhance shadows and highlights. The dodge tool, which is this kind of lollipop or magnifying glass icon, will be for the highlights. And the hand icon, which is the burn tool, would enhance the shadows. So yeah, just take your time and do this in low exposure settings, something probably below 10. This technique is great for adding the extra touches and depths to your designs. And you might have noticed in some of my thumbnails, I do use this technique. You can really end up with some striking and realistic lighting in Photoshop and it doesn't take that long to do either. But now let's look at something very few designers actually consider when they're designing something. Now, if your design has an element of energy, we need to focus on a few things to make it look proper and effective. Looking at this design here, we have obvious energy or movement with the cyclist on a bike. But what appears to be wrong in this design? What do you see that's ineffective? So the cyclist kind of looks like he's frozen in time, just totally flat. There's gonna be no prize money or medals for this guy until we make some crucial changes. So firstly, let's create some kind of vector shadow so our guy doesn't look like he's floating in midair. And then secondly, some cliche speed lines. Things still look a bit naff if you ask me, so I'm gonna add some context to the floor in the same directional movement or energy as he's headed. And also use italics on the title to give the viewer more sense of movement. 
Looking at the original design and then this final solution, we can see how vastly improved it is, simply considering energy and movement. Movement on a design actually makes things more memorable to a viewer and just more interesting, and it's a really great way to get your message across when used in the right context. Logo designing and layout. And if you've designed logos, I'm sure you've gotten to this stage where you just don't know how to lay things out in terms of the logo type, but you know you want it to look professional and proper. But here are some tips just for that. We want to create some contrast in the logo type in terms of size. But importantly, you might have noticed that the smaller line of logo type aligns with the logo symbol. This is one way to add harmony and also contrast on a design. However, on the logo symbol below the tail, there is a lot of white space that even though the design is aligned, it kind of seems a bit off balance. So we can nudge the symbol over to the left a little bit to balance the whole design. Often a logo isn't balanced because it's aligned perfectly, but because it's actually visually balanced, which is very important. And then on this design here, if you want the symbol to be smaller, we can create lines coming from the symbol down to the secondary logo type, like so. Another useful tool for playing with logo designs and other things that use titles and such is the scale tool. Now, if I want the secondary logo type to be 50% of the main logo type, you can just select the scale tool, hit enter, and then make it exactly 50%. I can then do the same for the logo mark, but maybe this time I want to go for 75% of the main logo type. This brings in a mathematical precision, and it's a good way to include harmony and balance to logo designs. And again, the white space below the tail is kind of making things seem a bit off, so let's give it a nudge to the left again. Next up, a hidden aspect to Google that can really help you get inspired and just get those creative juices flowing as a graphic designer. Okay, let's say that I've seen this banana image somewhere online and maybe I do love the style and I want to see more relevant artwork just like this. It might even be that I just want to see more designs based around bananas. Come into Google Images and then just drag and drop your image inside like this. Google will now bring up a ton of other relevant images or designs that fit this style, colour and overall look of your example. I find this a hugely powerful tool for research in aspects of graphic design and simply just getting inspired. But less said about this one here, the better, I think. But yeah, just drag and drop your designs into Google Images for a deep inspiration into specific kinds of design. But hey, let's talk about colour for a second. If you want to be more confident when selecting and using colour on your designs, well, just click the video on screen. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace. The show